Hello, Daily Coaching and Accountability folks. This is David Halpern. I'm here and I wanted to answer a question from Danny Franco. The question was basically, we want to invest in marketing for the coming year. And we're thinking about Facebook boosted ads, Facebook targeted ads, et cetera, et cetera. What do you recommend we do? Okay. So I'm going to touch on a couple of topics here. This is marketing 101 and 201. Uh, number one is, and, and please remember, uh, some of you know this, many of you don't. I ran a marketing company for five years. And some of the lessons I learned were awfully simple, but crucial. Here we go. When it comes to investing, two kinds of marketing. There's prospecting, which is the free kind. And then there's marketing, which is the paid kind. Okay. Now, how do most businesses become successful? And the answer is most businesses, almost all, became successful by first prospecting, doing the free stuff, and then later adding marketing, the paid stuff. Now, why the free stuff in the beginning? Because most companies start without any money. And later on, as they achieve success, they may want to layer in some paid marketing. So let's talk about what is the purpose of marketing first, and then we'll get to the how much do you invest and what channel do you invest in. Okay? Marketing, as you've heard me say before, is broadcasting to far more people far more frequently, both who you are and what you do. But I'm going to get a little more kind of marketing industry uh, sort of wise with you here for a minute. Use a different definition. The purpose of marketing is to generate leads, the top of the sales funnel. The rest of what we do within database marketing is to get to the appointments. But right now, what we're talking about is lead generation. So what Danny's question really, you know, sort of uh, attests to is the fact that we want to know how to get more leads in, and then we'll figure out how to convert them later, which is not the purpose of this video, okay? So you're paying for leads. The conversion is your challenge. I've had people, um, you know, I'm just going to use the real estate profession as an example, since about half of you are in the real estate profession. I've had people in the real estate profession say, hey, I bought leads on Zillow. It didn't work for me. Well, it's not that it didn't work for you. It's kind of that you didn't work. So sorry, but they work. All marketing channels work. The question is whether you convert. And there are some tricks to online leads, which we can get to momentarily. But my, what I'm trying to suggest to you is what you're going to track is the following. Number one, how much money you're going to invest in marketing. Number two, how many leads did you generate during that period of time? That's it. And number three is the cost per lead. So there are channels that will generate a significantly lower cost per lead than others. So your question is, which ones do we market in? Well, let's be more specific. What you're talking about is how do we generate more leads? Forget about closing for a minute. How do we generate more leads and what's the cost per lead? So let's talk Facebook targeted ads, Facebook boosted ads, or any other channels. Does everybody on this that's watching this video understand that the number one source of business is still your database? And the reason it's database is because those are warmer leads. So the best way to invest money in marketing is to invest in the place with the highest conversion. And that's actually still your database. So there's nothing better you can do than to give gifts. And as we've talked about in other videos, there's a actually a nifty little book out there called Giftology, written by the number one all-time Cutco salesman, Jeff Rulin, in which he argues, because his only marketing strategy is gift giving, that the key and the sweet spot for gift giving is four to six times a year. Not once, but four to six times a year. So it becomes a regimen. It's a discipline, right? And what happens is when you're doing that, you don't want to do it when everybody else does. So you don't want to give gifts on December 23rd to everyone. Why? Because you get lost in the shuffle. If you are going to do Christmas, you do it first, a month before-ish, so that you stand out from the crowd. Or what he likes to do is crazy things like National Pizza Day and this day and that day, which you can Google a list of those, by the way, anytime, and come up with some fine, fine sort of uh, you know, sort of excuses. So number one is invest in your database. How do you do it? You do it with gift giving. You can also do it, by the way, with treating people for, you know, coffees and the Starbucks runs and all that. I'd be a little careful about more than that. Okay. You can also do a perk your sphere type of program like we've discussed here a number of times earlier. So database would be the first place. And again, I'm going to remind you of this story you've now heard from me more than once. When my brother-in-law asked him for help in 2013, I want you to consider the fact that he asked me for help, even though I had no experience in the real estate niche or in his industry up, you know, up until that point where I was age 47 or whatever at the time. So why would he ask me for help? And the answer is because he knew I knew how to grow a business, regardless of industry, right? The first thing I asked him was, what, where was his database? And the second challenge I gave him, as some of you know, is go deliver a gift in the next 30 days. And those gifts, by the way, cost him, it was something like $5 per gift, no kidding. 
Uh, I'm not saying you can keep it that low, but he did a gift delivery that cost him about that much. And he visited 75 to 100 families and had some transactions going just from that. So best place to start. So now we're talking about, as Danny had alluded to, what about Facebook targeted ads? What about Facebook boosting? Okay. Well, the boosting is interesting. It's a little easier for you to do because when you boost, you're simply taking any post that you do on Facebook you're clicking on boost, you're picking an audience, and I'm going to give you the audience to pick. Are you ready? Pick the audience called people that like your page, the business page, and their friends. So boosting and targeted ads are done from the Facebook business page, right? And if you select, if you're doing a boost, you're just taking any post, okay, and you're boosting it for any dollar amount, you're going to get a lot of exposure for very little money. That's the beauty, the beautiful thing. And you can pick your budget. You can say $1 per day for 30 days or whatever, and it's super simple to do. OK, uh, so if you're going to boost, my strong recommendation is to the people that like your page and their friends. Another option is targeted ads, which, according to Facebook, has a higher conversion rate in terms not conversion rate, but a higher rate in terms of lower cost per lead, more effective, et cetera. And there are people I know who do it, but very few I know who do it successfully. So I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying it's a little more complicated because when you do a targeted ad, there are a lot more steps. You're picking the audience you like, and you're really entering into kind of a new world. If you want to hire somebody to do it for you, my experience has been nobody likes that, and everyone regrets that they did it. Learn it yourself. Do the process yourself of teaching yourself how to do a targeted ad. I'm going to tell you right now, we're not yet doing it successfully. We're doing boosts, and as some of you know, it's getting our name and reputation or whatever out there a lot. So now... If you're going to invest in that or if you're going to invest in online leads or whatever, let me first talk about what I don't care so much what you invest in. All marketing channels work. I care how you invest in a marketing channel. So the key is this. The sweet spot in marketing is two to three marketing channels. I know zero successful people, and especially in service-based industries, of which almost everybody I'm working with is, that are successful with only one marketing channel, that are getting leads and transactions from only one channel. The sweet spot is definitely two or three, and I know very few people with more than three. So if referrals, past clients, circle of influence, and all that is the number one source of business for many of you, or maybe number two, that has to be, database has to be one of your big three. But let's assume you have, you don't have a second channel working for you yet, or gives you transactions. Well, what do you wanna do? And the answer is pretty simple. You wanna test a marketing channel. And testing means just that, small dollar amount, short time frame, you determine and advance the rules of the test and you don't deviate from it no matter what the results. Pick and stick is the key to marketing because if you're, let's say you have only referrals and you want to test a second marketing channel and now you're testing Facebook boosted ads or targeted ads or whatever, right? Great. How many dollars are you going to spend or invest each month on this channel? For how long are you going to do it? What's the result that you require in order to continue doing it or to cancel it? That's how you test marketing. So to answer your question, Danny, which is everybody's question real basically here, which is how do we test new marketing channels? The answer is, I don't care which ones you pick because none of them have been successful for you yet. You test it with a predetermined amount of money, predetermined time frame, and only continue if it, ex if it exceeds expectation. And you have to set the expectation before you start. Pick and stick is the key here. I hope this helps you guys. We'll come back on more videos to talk a little bit about other potential marketing channels.